In this calculus lesson, we will be talking about limits, and this is the graphical approach. I'm going to give you guys three examples when x is approaching a finite value. If you understand these three examples, then you are going to be good to go. And here we go. So for the first one, let me give you guys f of x, and let me give you an equation, 1 over x minus 5. And you should know how to graph this kind of equations. Make sure you review your pre-calculus or algebra. Okay, here from the denominator, we know that x cannot be equal to 5. Otherwise, you get 1 over 0. So that means we have a vertical acetal. So let's go ahead and go to 5 and then put down the vertical acetal. And here is the 5. And the curve looks like this. And on the other direction here, it looks like this. Just give a quick sketch. All right, now. Let's focus on the first question. Let's talk about what's f of 5. So when we have this notation, it means that x is exactly equal to 5. And then you just have to plug that into x. So we get 1 over 5 minus 5. But of course, that's just 1 over 0. Keep in mind, we are just doing regular math. It's just a regular computation. 1 divided by 0, unfortunately, it doesn't have an answer. So in this case, we respond it as undefined. That's it. Whenever you are just doing computations, if you see a zero on the bottom, it's just undefined. Done. And then move on. It will be different if you have limits though. So let's say if we have the limit as x approaching 5, and let's put a little plus here. The plus means that we are coming from the right-hand side. I'll show you what it means and how it works in a minute. Or oh, in a second, right now. <laughs> All right, so right now. So what exactly does this mean? The positive direction means that it comes from the right-hand side. So you can just use your right index finger. Just put it somewhere on the curve for now. And you see here is the 5. So you are going to move toward 5 along the curve though. So you see, okay, we're going like this. But when we are approaching 5, you see that the y value is going to be bigger and bigger because the curve is going up and up and up and up. So in this case, for the limit, we are going to focus on the behavior of the curve, the behavior of the y value, what it approaches to. It approaches past the infinity. So the answer for this is past the infinity. So for the limit, if you put like 5 plus into the denominator, you get something like this. And you get a 1 over 0 plus. And yeah, you can say that is past infinity. We'll do this later on when we talk about how to actually work it out with the graph. Now let's go ahead and focus on the graph. Part C, limit x approaching 5 from the other direction. So let's put a negative there. That means we are coming from the left-hand side. So use your left-hand index finger. Have a look. Here is the 5. You are going to move toward 5 on the curve and pay attention to the y value. It's going down, right? The curve is going down, 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 and the y value is going to be approaching negative infinity, and the answer is negative infinity for C. Now for the last one, the limit as x approaching 5. Notice here, I'm not putting down any plus or minus. This is what it means. When we don't have any plus or minus, in fact, you have to check both. But we did them earlier already. This is the positive version, and this is the negative version, right? And you will see that, okay, check these answers. But they are different. If we have different answers, when we come from the right and come from the left, then for part D, this limit does not exist. D and E. It's kind of like saying there's no answer for a limit. When there's no answer for limit, we say doesn't exist. When there's no answer for a computation, we say undefined. And let me just write down some notes for you guys. First, the DNE stands for does not exist. And then the reason for this does being doesn't exist is because the limit as x approaching 5 from the positive direction this is not the same 
as if we have the limit when x is approaching 5 from the negative direction. Done. That's it. And now let's come back to graph right here. Here we have a vertical acetal. And this is the first case that you really have to focus when you have like hard to limit questions from the graph. And let me just write that down. We have a vertical acetal at x equals 5. And this is also the first case that I'm showing you guys when the function is being discontinuous. And in fact, there are three cases that a function is being discontinuous. And you should also know these three terms. A phi A, a vertical acetal, is the first one. Now, moving on to the second one. Here, I'm just going to give you guys a general function that say y is equal to f of x without the equation, but rather I'll just give you guys the graph with the important values, of course. Let's say here I am going to give you guys 3, and then let's say here I have 2 and also have 1. Here, let's say I have an open circle and have a curve looks like this. And then here I have a closed circle. Let's say I just have a line. This kind of graph is usually a result from the from a piecewise function. So make sure you know how to graph them as well. I will review them with you guys as well. Now, let's focus on part A. If the question is asking you f of, you know, in this case, the interesting x value is 3. So what's f of 3? If you say 1, good job. It's 1. Because this notation means we are looking at x being exactly equal to 3. So you come here, exactly equal to 3, and you look at the graph. Uh, here we hit the closed circle. The y value of that closed circle is f of 3. So the answer to that is 1, as we can see. Next, of course, limit. Limit as x approaching 3 from the right-hand side. All right, here we go. Place your right index finger somewhere here, and here is the 3. We are going to move towards 3, and you see that the y value is approaching 1. So the answer for this right here is also 1. Cool. Now, number, not number 3, part C. The limit as x approaching 3 from the negative direction, f of x. Here we go the other, we come from the other direction. Let's say, use your left index finger, and then we're going to move towards 3. And pay attention to the y value. The y value is approaching 2. The y value is approaching 2. Even though there's an open circle, but we just care about what number that we are approaching. And the y value is approaching 2. You can also think about it as the y value of the open circle is 2. And the answer for this right here is 2. Done. Part D, the limit as x approaching 3 without the plus and the minus. Here, we are going to check both of these, right? But they are different, so that means the answer is does not exist. I usually don't like to write down the answer equals doesn't exist, so that's why I just skip the equal sign and just say does not exist. But if you have the equal sign, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, again, here it's because the limit as x approaching 3 plus of our function. This right here is not the same as the limit as x approaching 3 from the left hand side of the function. Done. And this picture also shows you another case that function is, be, is being discontinuous. So have a look right here. Imagine that you are playing Super Mario and then the Super Mario is right here. What you have to do is you have to jump down, right? So in this case, we call this a jump. I, I came up with a Super Mario analogy on my own, but like the jump is actually a legitimate word, okay? This is the jump discontinuity. It's a jump at x equals 3, the function is discontinuous when x is at 3. But wait a minute, if we go back to number 1 here, shouldn't this be a jump as well because we are going from y value to another y value? 
But now, if you think about it, let me zoom in a little bit. Imagine that the Super Mario is right here. What happens? I think it's dead already because it goes down to negative infinity. So, the difference between a vertical acetone and a jump is vertical acetone has to deal with infinity or negative infinity. A jump, it has to deal with finite to finite. A finite to finite is considered jump. Now, the third one. Again, I'm just going to give you guys a picture. Let's say we have the following. Let's say I have uh, two right here. And let's say I have um, two. And then let's say I have a closed circle. And then let's say I have a open circle like this. And then like that, some, something like this. And let's say this right here is one. Okay, have a look. Part A, you know the deal. I will ask you what's f of 2. Well, in this case, you pay attention to the y value of the closed circle. So if you go up, the closed circle has the y value being 2. So the answer for this is 2. Again, x is at exactly equal to 2. B, we are talking about the limit. Let's say x is approaching 2 from the positive direction. Well, in this case, if you are coming toward 2 from the right-hand side, so let's say I put a point right here, and this time it's like this. The y value is approaching 1. So the answer for this is 1. Okay. The y value of that open circle is 1. You can also think about it like that. C. Limit as x approaching 2 minus of our function. Here, if we come from the left-hand side, like this, aha, it's also going to give us 1. So, for the last question, you know it, the limit as x approaching 2, without the plus or minus, this right here, we finally have a good answer for it, right? Have a look. They are both equal to 1, so the answer for this is just 1. And this is equal to 1. I'll just write this down. Because the limit as x approaching 2 plus of the function is very nicely equal to the limit as x approaching 2 from the left-hand side of the function. And because they are both equal to 1, so of course the answer is just equal to 1, and then we are done. And this is the third situation that you will have to know for a function being discontinuous at a value. This is called RD, a removable discontinuity. But I'll just write this down first. Right? So what does RD stand for? This stands for removable. Removable. This continuity. All right, and then just have a look. If you understand all these three cases, then you should be good for all the limits questions from a graph. Check out the next video. I'll talk about the limit at infinity from a graph.